Hello, welcome to part 24 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our question number 116. The therapist is evaluating a patient with diagnosis of cerebral palsy. The therapist notes that all of the extremities and the trunk are involved. Further assessment also reveals that the lower extremity are more involved than the upper extremity and that the right side is more involved than the left. This patient most likely has which classification of cerebral palsy? Option A. Spastic hemiplegia. Option B. Spastic triplegia. Option C. Spastic quadriplegia. Option D. Spastic diaplegia. And the answer is Option D. Spastic diaplegia. Explanation to this question is A child with spastic diaplegia most often present with a lower extremity and trunk more involved than the upper extremity. Also, one side is often more involved than the other side. Now let's move to question number 117. An infant is diagnosed with correctable teripus equinovirus involving the right foot. The physical therapist expects the following corrective interventions for the patient except Option A. Manipulation Option B. Casting Option C. Splendage Option D. Sinity insertion And the answer is Option D. Sinity insertion Explanation to this question is An easy or correctable cleft foot deformity is managed by manipulation, casting and splintage. Surgery is indicated to resistant cleft foot deformity or to deformities that fails to respond to non-operative intervention. Options for insertion include curcutane insertion and torococurcuneal medial or posterior medial insertion. Now let's move to question number 118. The therapist in an outpatient physical therapy clinic receives an order to obtain a shook orthotic for a patient. After evaluating the patient, the therapist finds a stage 1 pressure ulcer on the first metatarsal head. Fate bearing surface need to be transferred posteriorly. Which orthotic is most appropriate for this patient? Option A. Scaphoid pad. Option B. Thomas heel. Option C. Metatarsal pad. Option D. Cushion heel. And the answer is Option C. Metatarsal pad. Explanation to this question is Metatarsal pad successfully transfer the weight onto the metatarsal shaft of this patient. A Thomas heel or a scaphoid pad are patients with excessive pronation. A cushion heel absorb shock at contact. Now let's move to question number 119. Orthoses are usually classified into two types, static and dynamic. The classification is mainly based on the amount of joint movements that each orthosis allows. Which of the following is not correct about the static orthosis? Option A. Static orthosis do not allow the joint movements. Option B. They are mainly ordered for patients with weakened muscles. Option C. They function as rigid support in the fractures. Option D. They are used for promoting eventual joint movements. And the answer is... Option B. They are mainly ordered for patients with weakened muscle. Explanation for this question is... Dynamic Non-static orthoses are ordered for patients with weakened muscles or limited control of the neuromuscular system. In contact to dynamic orthoses, static orthoses do not allow joint movements. This type serves as rigid support in fractures, inflamed tendons and soft tissue and nerve injuries. They are also used to promote eventual joint movements through serial or progressive orthoses. Now let's move to question number 120. A patient comes to physical therapy with the diagnosis of medial meniscal tear of the right knee. Which of the following signs and symptoms is most indicative of this diagnosis? Option A. Mechanical locking. Option D. Decreased pain with weight bearing. Option C. Posterior knee swelling. Option D. Atrophy of hamstring. And the answer is... Option A. Mechanical locking. Explanation to this question is... A history of mechanical locking is a common symptom of knee medial meniscal tear. Pain is commonly increased with weight bearing, not with decreased with weight bearing. Swelling would more likely be evident anteriorly, not posteriorly. Cordyceps atrophy is more likely, not hamstring atrophy. 
So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.